I think um, whenever you're doing an ecological restoration project that's large scale and especially in a developed area, you know, one of the first steps in the design process is understanding the ecosystem drivers, right? So you have to, it's, it's developing a good plan. And so we're standing adjacent to development and we're standing on former development. And so we have degraded soils. We have nutrient inputs coming in from the lawns and the roads and everything. Um, and so you have to kind of keep that in context as you think about setting your expectations for the trajectory of your project, right? And so it, as doing ecological restoration is, is not coming in, planting trees, rolling out sod, and maintaining it like an English garden, right? Ecological restoration is really about uh, jump-starting uh, what we call the successional trajectory, right? When you think about ecological succession, you think about how habitats change over time. So you think about meadows, right? And then you have woody vegetation coming in, shrubs, smaller things. And then you bring in the bigger oak trees, so those, those oh, slow growing big trees that create ultimately a forest, right? And that takes a lot of time. What takes even longer time is when you have these, uh, these ecosystem drivers that are negative, right? So you have biological invasions, for example, so invasive species. Um, you have the nutrient inputs. You have human disturbance. ATVs, for example, were uh, an issue in this area. Um, and fortunately, the town and we and the existing neighbors work together to uh, self-police that. And we've successfully, uh, so far, eradicated the ATV use. But ATVs destroy habitats, compact soils, right? They, they cause all kinds of issues. Um, and so one good thing, though, about ecological restoration is that our focus is on native plants. And native plants are species that have evolved to um, thrive in the current conditions, right? So nutrient-poor soils, for example. Um, they, we are picking species that are facultative. They can tolerate dry conditions. They can also tolerate extremely wet conditions. So they, they, they can adapt either way. Um, and so nutrient inputs are a bad thing for native species because what they do is allow the, the weeds and the invasive species to have a competitive advantage. And so we spend a, an awful lot of time here prior to restoration and then after we've planted things to manage the invasives, to reduce that competition for our native species. Um, and again, you can see it's paying off. I mean, I can look around and I can see a, um, a, a grove, if you will, of, of common milkweed plants over there. Well, they're great for monarchs and other pollinators. I can see native warm season grasses coming in. I can also see invasive species like mugwort or myelominate or phragmites. And those things are never going to go away. But our goal is to, again, jumpstart succession here, give these native species a fighting chance, and then hopefully shift the, the the table so that the native species can have that competitive edge and keep out as much as possible the invasive species from overtaking.